All right, well, we're starting a new episode. Now that Mercedes is running, driving, registered, and insured, now we're on to the, uh, well, the honeymoon phase is over. Now we're on to the livability, the long-term, and the experimental. So, the reason why I'm out here in the middle of a field with push dolly is because I am looking for that barrel right there. This is big old blue barrel. I'm not really certain what's in it, but there's like a half track over there back in the woods and a bunch of old tires. It's got some kind of goop in it. A lot of goop actually. And I'm assuming it's either got diesel, coolant, or some kind of oil in it. And the reason why I want this and why it's related to the Mercedes is because I think I'm going to start experimenting with alternative with alternative fuels eventually here in the future. Maybe not immediately, but uh, I'm making preparations now. Uh, with diesel prices being uh, absolutely uh, insane through the roof right now, um, you know I've always been interested in renewable energy, alternative fuels, and you know just generally upcycling, salvaging, scavenging, and uh, repurposing junk, and. Uh, Alternative fuels kind of hits all those buttons for me because it's it's free waste that nobody wants that you're repurposing for a specific use that you want, a need. And uh, yeah, uh, you can just burn engine oil in, in these uh, OM617 engines. Um, you need to thin it out with either gasoline or diesel, but uh, you can just settle it filter it if you really fancy centrifuge it which i don't think i'm going to ever get to that point and uh just run it in there with like 10 to 15 percent gasoline mixed with just straight engine oil uh you can also burn atf um dot three and dot four brake fluid um diff fluid uh, uh hydraulic fluid power steering fluid you know the whole thing if it's if it's an oil and it's not a silicone based oil uh you can burn it in the engine just mix it with uh, something else that'll totally dissolve into it like gasoline or diesel then thin it out reduce the viscosity and maybe add some fuel system cleaners in there while you're at it and uh yeah so uh i think i'm gonna start saving my own oil all my diff fluid all my transmission fluid all of my engine oil uh any rotten gasoline i get any rotten diesel i get and uh start dumping it in this here uh, jug and uh, eventually, one day, I'm going to get to the point where I'm making black diesel. Maybe. Just maybe. And uh, my cousin's cousin owns a restaurant. And uh, he's like right at the end of the road. And I'm sure he's getting rid of waste oil all the time. And uh, unless he's giving it to somebody else who's doing uh, biodiesel, um, I might start experimenting with making biodiesel or at least cutting uh, waste vegetable oil with something else. We'll see. Probably not. No promises. But uh, maybe. Maybe. Just maybe. I don't really want to run straight vegetable oil or straight waste vegetable oil. Because one, waste vegetable oil has a shit ton of contaminants, particulates, and all this other stuff. A lot of water in it. You got to do a lot of processing. Straight vegetable oil, way too thick. You're going to have to cut it with gas or diesel or something. Additionally, it's really susceptible to uh, diesel algae because it's bio oil. It's, it's just a, a regular organic oil. Um, you, also, we got a lot of ponds. My my uncle's got farm ponds. They got a lot of duckweed. They got a lot of algae. I might even experiment with uh, algae oil. That's not happening because that requires a lot of processing. But, you know, I'm just, I'm interested in it. All right. So that's why I am pulling this 55 gallon uh, plastic jug out of the middle of the woods is uh, because I need something to dump all my oil in. And uh, also, uh, if this all falls through, then uh, I can use this rain barrel. Uh, unless it's got something horrible in it, like just like. Yeah, I really don't even know what's in it. Uh, anywho, but yeah. Also, this big ass diesel bag in here. Look at that thing. Maybe one day I'll touch that. Probably won't though. But anywho, that's what I'm doing. Additionally, I'm gonna call my uncle and I'm gonna see what's up with the the AC in the Mercedes because uh, that thing started going. I don't know whether it ha just had a chronic leak, so they disconnected the compressor so it didn't burn itself up. Or if uh, it had a chronic leak and they needed to put R12 in it and they wasn't worth fooling with, so they just didn't bother with it. Um, could be fine. Compressor could be exploded. I don't know. We'll see. But I would like the AC to work because uh, it's god-awful hot here in Charleston and humid. And uh, kind of need the AC because I don't want to just run this car in the middle of winter. Anywho, I'm going to shut up 
and get that, you know, 200 feet that way back into my truck and uh, yeah, see where things go. All right, loading her up on the trailer. She's starting to leak a bit and uh, I'll be, she's actually, she's got about 15 gallons of diesel in her. Nice, score. Also, you may be wondering what happened to the like 12 gallons of like rotten diesel I pulled out of the car originally. Yeah, I got rid of that. I, I basically used it for weed control. I used it as a um, as an oil-based, um, what you call it, carrier for um, herbicide. Uh, additionally, I just dumped it on some hard-to-kill invasive species, as well as used it to start brush fires. So uh, we really wish I wouldn't have done that now. Probably should have saved onto it. Uh, but yeah, whatever. Anyway, now I have 15 more gallons of diesel. That's probably four times as old. All right, well, there she sits with the rest of my refuse and uh, just took this cap off. And as you can see, there is indeed diesel fuel in there. It is very atomized at the moment. And uh, based off of that little, that little guy down there, I can see I have estimated the level to be right where I scribed right there. And uh, after taking a diameter and doing some quick math, uh, there is between uh, 10 and a half and 11 gallons of uh, very pink looking diesel in there. So I'm assuming this is off-road diesel and uh, that it's probably got a, a shit ton of water in it. But anywho, better than nothing. Um, it's a good starting point, which means that uh, I can probably dump in 10 gallons of just motor oil, diff fluid, transmission fluid, uh, brake fluid, all that jazz. Uh, and maybe, you know, another gallon of uh, just like gasoline or probably heat to help get rid of that, that water. Let it settle, run it through a, a 25, a 10, and a 1 micron filter stack, and uh, then hopefully be able to run it in the Mercedes. Uh, we shall see, but this is my starting point. Is uh, I'm just going to say there's, let's just say there's 10 and a half gallons of diesel in there, and I've got about half gallon of uh, 80W90 I need to throw in there, and a couple oil changes, and within a year maybe we'll have a 50-50 mix. We'll see. All right, our first addition to the black diesel barrel, other than the, you know, nasty woods diesel, is uh, probably about somewhere between two and a quarter and two and a half ounces of uh, 90 weight. Drink up. No going back now. Delicious. Yeah, it's draining like a 90 weight. Smelling like one too. Also, did I say ounces of mint quartz? Uh, I am I'm now gonna keep a spreadsheet of everything that goes in here so that I know what my volume is And I also know the various viscosities and contents that have been dumped in here You know other than the you know 10 and a half to 11 gallons of mystery diesel that was in here to begin with um, So I'll be able to do a rough calculation of like viscosity and uh, Particulate and all that stuff and uh, then I won't do anything. I'll just filter it and throw it in the car anyway But uh, at least I'll be able to guess better maybe this bird, this cardinal, is like retarded. It's been in here for like 30 minutes and it just keeps going back and forth between the rafters and it can't figure out how to get out and it hates me being in here. And it just screams and scrocks and runs around and does this shit. The garage door is wide open and it just, it can't comprehend that it can go outside. I've been in and out like eight times. It's still doing this. You hush up now, frog. But anywho, the reason why I'm coming out here is because I was riveting this $40 piece of plastic back on the back of the Dodge Dakota. But also, I uh, just finally decided to clean all the dirt off of this thing, and uh, it actually has, like, volume markings. And I checked, and I was actually right on the money. It's somewhere between 10 and a half and 10 and a quarter gallons. So uh, that's what we're going with. You ever seen $300 worth of copper? Now you have this poor wheelbarrow is about to collapse all right so uh i just pounded two cosmos because i'm out of beer on memorial day weekend which is a sin in and of itself and then to double sin i went and pounded two cosmos because that's the only cocktail i'm able to make with what i got in the fridge at the moment and it's too damn hot for me to be drinking straight liquor and uh then i cut up my M nra card because uh that's about all the NRA is good for, Support Firearms Policy Coalition, and uh, scraped all the caulk out of the sunroof. And uh, it was probably uh, the right idea for me in episode one to caulk this because uh, there's literally 
none of the felt seal left on this side and the rear seal is pretty much gone. Front seal might actually still be good. Uh, and that, that felt seal is pretty bad. And uh, just chuck a 20 amp fuse down there in the fuse box because I've already popped two 16 amp fuses on a different day trying to do this. But uh, I wanna see if I can get the, uh, the sunroof to go down. Also, I've already turned the manual thing in there and broken the manual turn knob on there. And I need to take like a 17 millimeter socket and uh, like fucking JB weld some shit in there to make an, <laughs> make an adapter for that. But anywho, I'm just gonna press this button and uh, see if this guy goes back. Then, oh, there it goes. Oh shit, we have a sunroof. Nice. I don't know if that went back all the way. I don't think it did. I think this guy is supposed to do something. We haven't popped the fuse yet. We'll try that a little bit more and see if uh, see if we can get this guy to uh, do something. Maybe that's as far as it goes. Well, it closes back up. That's a really good sign. I guess that's as far back as it goes. Hey, we have a sunroof. Anywho, um, this is just an interlude here. Yeah, that's as far as it goes, ow. Because uh, now that I got a sunroof, um, I might be able to save that front seal, but there is just, there's no fucking back seal left. And uh, that's all I got left of these felt pads. There's just fucking nothing in here. Anyway, I gotta get the shop back up in here and suck all this shit out. But uh, I'm gonna buy some aftermarket seals because I don't think I can get the o I don't think these side seals are gonna be a problem. Um, uh, I'm gonna try and keep this front seal because it's actually decent. I think it seals, but the back seal is just totally fucked. I'm gonna buy some aftermarket seals and I'm gonna try and get them to fit. I've read too many horror stories uh, on the internet. I think this is supposed to be popping up of uh, people uh, trying to use. Um, aftermarket seals on these w123 sunroofs and uh it just does they're like literally impossible to fit in like they're oversized and will not fit um these actually aren't as rusted as i thought they were going to be as far as i can tell but yeah um because if i could spend like less than 100 bucks and have a sunroof i'm gonna go for a sunroof if I have to spend 300 bucks on factory Mercedes seals, uh, I'm just gonna caulk this fucking thing shut because uh, a sunroof is not worth that much to me. So, yeah. Um, anyway, the reason why I'm doing this is because I wanna clear coat the car and I need to clean around the sunroof so I need to scrape all the caulk off. And if I'm gonna scrape all the caulk off, I need to replace the seals so the sunroof doesn't leak anymore because, uh, you know, it rains and shit. And uh, I kind of already been fighting that all this time just from the, you know, corners of the hood seals. So yeah, um, but it seems to work. So that's a really good sign. That means I can actually try. Neat. Okay, dokie, it's now almost dark out and I've gone by with just some spray away glass cleaner, cleaned off most of the caulk residue. There's still a little bit of stuff in here that I gotta clean up. And I've also just put some packing tape on it just to keep the rain out. And uh, that should be uh, a hell of a lot easier to remove later. And uh, just ordered up a set of seals, set me back 82 bucks. But um, I think I can reuse the front seal. The front seal still seems to be in totally serviceable shape. The rubber is still nice and soft. But this rear seal has just melted. And there's nothing left of this felt. There's not, literally zero felt over there. And it's like less than a quarter of this guy left. So... From what I've read, uh, this rear uh, seal, if you get it uh, aftermarket, uh, tends to leak, but you can at least get it in. The front one doesn't leak, but you can't get it in. And no one has ever said anything about these felt seals, so I don't think they're gonna be an issue. Uh, hey, focus. So uh, yeah, anywho, um, that's good enough for now. Okay, so I was walking through the hardware store yesterday, getting parts for a project for work, and I just had a Jimmy Neutron blast. <laughs> Um, I know how I can seal this sunroof semi-permanently without having to put any kind of sealant, any kind of liquid adhesive, anything like that in here, and also without having to replace any of the factory seals. It won't be a perfect fix, but if I run into a roadblock, it will definitely be a fix. And it may even be a fi fix that works better than the factory seals, uh, so long as you're not using the sunroof all the time. 
and that is, what, is it, what do they call it? Screen retainer spline. So uh, for window screens, uh, the old school ones, what you do is you lay the, the um, window screen material into the window frame and then there's a little trough that runs the whole way around it and you get this rubber tube and you stuff it in one end and you have a special tool and you run it down one side, pull it tight and then you run it up like that and it stuffs down in there and it holds the screen in place. And they sell this stuff in like eight different sizes and I'm hoping I can find some that is the perfect size to seal off this track. I just took the calipers and measured everything. It is a 3 16 gap here on the sides as well as the back and about a 1 and 1 8 gap here on the front. Um, I think I should be able to just jam um, 3 16 in the whole way around. But my plan is to start like right here and I measured everything. This The sunroof is exactly 3 foot wide and 17 inches long. So that works out to an exactly nine foot piece of spine, probably a little bit less because it'll stretch as you stuff it. But start right here, stuff the spline in here, run the whole way around like this, run it out like that and leave just a little one inch tail sticking out. Won't be pretty. If you really wanted to, you could run it perfectly all the way up here and just overlap it a little bit and cut it, but it won't be as convenient. You have to get in there with like a pick or something and then Anytime you want to run the sunroof, what you do is you just grab that spline and you just pull it like that, like a ripcord, or uh, kind of like those uh, those like pull and open packages. Rip that whole thing out, and then you can use the sunroof as you like. And uh, then when you get home, or you think rain's going to come, you just keep one of those screen retainer, you know, pizza cutter tools in the car, and you just whoop, run it all the way back in there and your sunroof is sealed. So that is my emergency backup plan. Okay, so I went to the hardware store and I bought the biggest splines they had that were black. They had quarter inch in white or in like weird off gray, but um, I don't think I can get that to fit. But I think this might be able to fit in this eighth inch gap, but it may be a little bit too big for that. Um, I'm gonna see if I can get this to go in. I'm gonna peel up this tape because we got a tropical storm coming. Uh, this weekend something tropical depression something like that just kind of poofed into existence and uh, I want to see if this will work because if it'll work then uh you know that's a great backup plan to always have in the pocket keeps keep 10 foot of this in the trunk and uh, you know always have that if you need it and uh, you know I'm just curious at this point plus I want to know where all my spline went but anywho I'm gonna do that real quick and uh, we'll see if uh, see if this holds water over the weekend or so. Keeps water out, holds water? One, one or two. Okay, so before I got too far, I decided to at least try it out, and it looks like this will indeed work. No problem. However, in order to actually install it, I have to remove the rest of all of the seals. Um, I'm not taking that front seal out, personally, because I think it's perfectly fine. Um, but this back one will have to come out, but I have to take the whole roof out. Do that, and I'm not doing that right now, because it's like 7.30 at night, and I'm fucking hungry. And, uh, but... This will work, and I mean that's it's in there pretty decently. And if you want it out, you just whoop, give it a good solid tug like that, and you can just huck it back in the car, put your sunroof down, and then uh, pull out your pizza cutter, stuff it back in when you want to. So I think that'll work if I need it to, but I don't think I need it to. But anyway, I'm gonna put the tape back down because uh, <laughs> I'm not doing that this weekend because it's supposed to rain before the weekend. But anywho, I digress, another tangent. Okay, well, my sunroof seals came in. So uh, we got an arm of a tropical storm supposed to swing by about one o'clock, it's nine right now, and uh, dump a shit ton of rain for like 10 minutes. So I'm gonna see if I can knock this out in four hours. I looked up the service manual and it seems to be pretty quick. So as long as that's the seals don't fight me, I should be able to just pop the sunroof out with, uh, well, without too much trouble. Um, so I'm gonna rip this tape off. And interestingly, it is a, uh, just covered in these uh, little tiny ass beetles. I don't know what they are, but they really like this cellophane tape for some reason. But uh, that's their problem because uh, they're getting ripped off. Bye bye beetles. All right, uh, note to self. Uh, cellophane tape leads, uh, leaves a shit ton of residue. So uh, I could do that again. And uh, so far, spray away is uh, not taking it off very well. So, whoops.
Okay, with only a minor amount of braking shit, we got that off. This bolt right here snapped off. This one was totally stripped out before I even touched it, so I had to drill it out. Uh, I don't think those are critical, um, but I do think they hold in this spring mechanism down here. So uh, that might be a problem if I ever care about this. I'll probably just tape some fucking... Do something to that jam piece of metal underneath it, because this, this air deflector springy guy is busted. I'll just shove a spring underneath these guide rods out here. Um, but anywho, that's out. Uh, just a quick step-by-step -step on how to do this. Um, probably the most tricky thing about the whole thing is getting that guy off because of those clips. So uh, I went through the service manual, and what you do is you roll the window back three-quarters of the way to about here. You get in there with two putty knives, like that, and these clips are like this. You can just yank on it, but if your thing is old and rotten, oh, actually, these are in metal, so yeah, you can just rip on it. But if they're corroded, like this, they don't want to come out. So the best thing to do is just put tension right here with one hand, jam a putty knife in here, push this one way, come over here, push this the other way. And the thing is, this is a metal bracket right here, and these are metal, so they kind of bond together, so you have to loosen each side so that they move. Then you just pop one down, move over here, pop this one down, and then I went, did this whole side, and then came back and did these. But you have to press on both sides with two separate putty knives while putting the light downward pressure. It's kind of tricky, but then once it comes out, you can just slurp this right out the front like that. Then you need to roll the thing all the way back, take out this guy, which is a fine thread Phillips, and it is very soft steel, and it just mine this one snapped off it just straight twisted off the thing it came out like halfway and then it just snapped off um maybe i wasn't supposed to take it off i don't know but no no because you have to take these guides off but anywho take that off these are just sheet metal screws down here don't touch that that's an adjustment and then that comes up and off you do that for the other side um then what you have to do is Come down underneath on the back side of this. This is the back. There is a little clippy guy right there that holds the special metal cable in there. And then right here, these guys, right there, there is an eight millimeter screw there, an eight millimeter screw there. Take both of those out, take that clippy guy out, run the, um, the cable back, you know, the majority of the way. I got mine dirty dangling right now. And then, um, I also had to loosen, take these two eight millimeters out, and it gave me a lot more wiggle room, and I pulled it right back out the top, and then I just put the eight millimeters, eight millimeters back in. But, leave it to Germans to reinvent the cotter pin. Here's the way overcomplicated clippy boy that holds this guy in. Uh, could just been a cotter pin, but I digress. Take that out, and then you can just slurp it out like that. Try not to bend that tube. So, this is my rear seal, and as you can see, um, it's, uh, yes, yeah, gone. So, uh, I'm going to, uh, remove all of that, clean up my sealing surface, and hope that this guy right here fits. And, uh, then I'm going to do the felt jobs. You have to take the roof out to do the felt jobs, unless you've got some sort of super cool articulating Phillips head screwdriver. Uh, because you have to take this jobber out and you just can't reach this screw because it's recessed and the sunroof is in the way unless you've got like some fancy like like articulating Phillips head to get in there to allow you to strip bolts out more efficiently in tight places you have to pull the roof out um, so and I mean if you're doing the these seals you're probably going to have to do the rear one anyway so and it's kind of but anywho you got to do it and this guy um, this is a bracket just held on by Four sheet metal screws and that clamps the felt bracket up in like this and then it is felt covered rubber because you have to slide back and forth and this is all that's left of mine there's literally that's the only rubber left it's all just metal on metal and these new ones from what i could tell online from looking at other people doing this this is just some kind of like standard size liner and it is way deeper than it's supposed to be. So you may have to notch and fit it accordingly. Mine actually look to be the right depth, so I'm hoping I won't have to do that. But just be advised, if it is, if yours are significantly deeper, 
you will have to cut fit and are mine any longer oh yeah mine are way goddamn longer too so i'm gonna have to snip like four inches off of those so anywho been an hour plenty of time hopefully it'll get rained on in the process and don't encounter any more calamity all right so i've got the channel all cleaned up and i went to put the uh weather stripping in and uh it's not even fucking close so i went and i pulled up the ebay listing and uh well fuck right there bold print first thing in the description doesn't fit w123 coupes with electric sunroofs and uh yeah it's only the rear seal that's different because mine was like flat and this is not that so uh shit well uh i'm going i don't know what i'm gonna do um i guess i am going to return this get my money back and uh, just buy a rear seal and see if I can buy some of this uh, side flashing on its own. But, uh, that kind of sucks. Well, anywho, uh, they weren't my day, so I guess we're jamming window screens blind in here, because uh, that's about all I can do. Um, yeah. Well, anywho, how's your day going? Mine's... okay. Alright, well that's all back together and fully functional. And I jammed some of that window screen spline in there. Left it long over there. You know, just in case I need it. Um, went in pretty well on this side. It's a little loose down here in the corners, but this thing has drains, so the little bit that gets through there probably is not going to cause any harm because the harm is already done. And yeah, well, this one is that, that one will actually seal over here. It's about this uh, 0.185 inch spline. It's about perfect for the back and that side over here, but it's tight on this side. It took two people and all the force I could put on that little plastic pizza cutter to get this that far in. So uh, not an ideal situation, but better nothing. Uh, I think, I guess theoretically I could get some, uh, uh, some uh, point one uh, six and, you know, do this side and then do that side and then get some one eight five and run it over the top, like stuff the little curly cue down in there and then run this over the top. And that may just work out just fine. Um, we'll see. But uh, I'm going to return those uh, those seals uh, or not. Uh, i got to check. If it ends up costing me like 20 bucks to return them, I'm only going to get like 60 bucks back. And then I have to see how much it is to buy those side things. If it only ends up being like $10 more, I think I'll just keep these seals because then I'll have a spare front seal. And then I'll have a rear one that I don't know what the fuck I can do with it, but I'll have it. And uh, then I won't have to find up and order these things. And I know, I'm pretty certain Pelican Parts has the rear uh, OEM Mercedes seal in stock. Pretty sure, yeah. Might be the front, might be the rear. I think it's the rear. Um, if it is the rear, then great. I'll just order that up. It's 40 bucks, but I'll have to eat it. Um, and yeah, and then we'll be over $100 spent on this fucking sunroof. But I digress. Or maybe the math will be right and I can return the stuff, get like 40 bucks or 60 bucks back by that and then get these side things for like 20 bucks or something like that and uh, not be any worse than I already was. So we'll see. Just look at that beautiful exhaust system. Oh, beautiful. Anyway, we're switching gears to the rear gears because uh, I really want to know how many fucking teeth is on a 288 ring and pinion set. You know, 288 seems pretty obvious, but there's two different types, of, two different sets of gears it could be. Additionally, I have a 307 um, Speedo slash Odo in the uh, dashboard. No photos of that on the internet either. Can't find the 288 or the 307 anywhere on the internet. Um, and I have been able to find one photo of someone of the inside of a 307. And it looked to be a, what was it, a 40 and 13 gear set. And I thought it was a 45 and um, whatever it was. 40, or 46 and 15. And there's another one that one could potentially be. So yeah, um, kind of a mystery. So my plan is to take the fill plug out, jam my endoscope in there, spin one of these uh, wheels around, and uh, see how many um, teeth are on the carrier. I gotta go put this thing in neutral first. Uh, but first I'm gonna take that out. And uh, yeah, so hopefully, those guys stay, and the jack and the three jack stands keep me from dying, but I just want to know how many teeth is on the damn gear, and I'm not taking this fucking back cover off, because that's too much damn effort, but, like, why is that not common knowledge? So anyway, hopefully I can find some kind of mark uh, on the carrier, line that up with a tooth, and just rotate the thing over, like, five times, 
while filming it, and from that I should have enough data to be able to uh, count all the teeth, hopefully. Uh, well, she leaked about four ounces of gear oil for some fucking reason, but uh, that's out. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to uh, even see the carrier, or not the carrier, the, the fucking ring gear, uh, but I'm hopeful. I'm hoping I can wriggle my endoscope far enough in here and not get it fucking pinched in half by the carrier uh, long enough to be able to get one full revolution out of this and I've got a jack stand wedged against the wheel so I can rotate this this wheel upward dirt right in the tank spin the drive shaft and get the whole carrier and pinion and everything to rotate maybe if I'm lucky I can see the pinion at the very least um, we'll see either or if I can figure out the number of teeth on either of them, I can get the exact, precise, mathematical gear ratio. So that's all I want. All right, so here I am just wriggling this endoscope and at the rear end like an automotive colonoscopy. Uh, and what I have done is pretty much just jam it up against, facing pretty much straight upward, uh, upward and to the left, uh, kind of pretty much straight up out of the, um, the, the drain hole at about a, like a 10 degree angle or something. I'm, I'm right up on there. And what what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up um, so that I can have both sides of the carrier pretty much in parallel, just to where I can see the other side of the opening in the carrier visible at the, at the bottom right corner of the frame. And then I'm going to count every single tooth I see, and up until I see that, that opening in the carrier make two passes, because both sides of the carrier are open, so to make one full resol rev yeah. revolution, we're going to see this same... Uh, seen twice so we're going to have that the little bit of white down there in the bottom right twice and we're going to count all these up and then we will end up back in the same place and we will just count every single gear we saw up until uh, the second time we see it I don't know if I explained that well but um, I'll kind of label them on screen here as we go um, and just reviewing the initial footage as I'm sitting here in the garage breaking your fourth wall immersion um, it looks to be that this is a 49 and 17 because um, I'm counting way more than 46 teeth, like, and uh, so, yeah, um, I'm thinking 49 and 17 is what it is, and hopefully that is correct, and if it's not, I'm putting it right up here on the screen, showing how uh, I was not able to review this while uh, sitting in my garage, but anywho, yeah. So uh, that is one side of the mystery solved. Now we just have to 100% without a doubt confirm how many gears are on the 307. So uh, let's let's go into that kind of debacleville now as I... Uh, Look into that information on the back end. All right, well, that's progress, kind of. Um, just for my own autistic, obsessive, compulsive uh, edification. But anywho, for the record, full synthetic gear lubricant smells way better than conventional. Or at least all the conventional I've ever used has like limited slip additive or something. Uh, Cause this stuff kind of just smells like a combination of Crisco, camphor, and uh, sulfury well water. Whereas, uh, where's uh, the, the regular? stuff I use, this stuff, um, smells like a uh, hot death and sewage. So, uh, I may just switch over to uh, full synthetic just because my hands don't actually reek. Okay. So real quick, let's touch on, uh, the 307 gear because I don't have a 307 that I can analyze at the moment. However, I do have this set of forum posts from peach parts which is if I can get my cursor, I'm still getting used to having two monitors. Anywho, uh, about uh, swapping out the uh, differential in a 1983 300D, and uh, this apparently has a W124 um, differential that is getting swapped into it here, talking about it, um, or yeah, 26 or 24, I don't remember, I don't remember what the SD is, but anyway, swapping that in, and uh, there is a picture of the differential up in here somewhere, right here this is the original one in the 300d so this is a 307 from a w123 not from a, a w126 or w124 and i've taken this image and i've plopped it into paint net and i've done some some uh, complex geometry over here to ascertain that this is the middle tooth on either side more or less give or take one and uh, I have then just, I traced the outside of the ring gear, inside of the ring gear, uh, did a diagonal between the two, drew a line between those two that told me these are all of the teeth on one half of the ring gear, and I have enumerated them 
and that gives me 20. So it's 20, it's either 40 or 41 or 39. And if we go over here to the spreadsheet that I have showing all the possible gear combinations for all of the teeth, and we go over here to 40, and we look at 39, 40, and 41 for the ring gear, and we look for which of those, out of all of this, works out to a 3 or 7, or a 307, give or take. And uh, the answer is only one potential option right here. And as you can see, there's my comment talking about it being a potential 40 tooth. So I think the 307 in the 1983 300D at the very least is a 40 and 13. And additionally, everything here that is in red is a hunting tooth design. You see up here, hunting tooth is an engineering best practice. And so far, um, it appears that all of the Mercedes ones I have been able to confirm over here have all been hunting tooth designs, so I don't know why they wouldn't decide to do a hunting tooth. And as you can see, they didn't because uh, this is the actual gear ratio that we confirmed with counting. So I believe this is our two actual gear ratios that we care about, which is this over here. So my speedometer, when I am going 60, would, should read that I'm going 56.2 rather than with the other two options being 56.3 or 56.4. Really extremely insignificant amount, like half a percent. Um, but with an odometer, that adds up after, you know, 100,000 miles. That's 500-something miles. Not, not a huge difference. You know, the difference in the diameter of your wheels makes more difference than that. But I would, since I have an odometer discrepancy and I have to report this shit to the DMV every year in order to get a reduction in my property taxes... I want to at least be able to track this accurately. Additionally, I'm just autistic, obsessive, compulsive, and the fact that this was not readily available on the internet just pisses me off and grinds my gears, literally. So, uh, yeah, uh, that is uh, what I have determined. Uh, we know for certain that uh, it is a 4917 in the 288, and I'm fairly confident that it is a 4013 in the 307, at least according to this gear right here um if you can believe that um but you know theoretically could still be a 46 and 15 or a 43 and 14 also these bright reds up here are prime numbers it seems like the germans like prime numbers like this and like this and which all every single one i have been able to confirm has a prime number so this one checks out because it has a prime. However, uh, when this one checks out because it has a prime, but this one does not have a prime, so I'm kind of suspicious of that one. Um, however, I do have a Bins World form post here that indicated that it's a 46 and 15. So still might be open for debate, but that could have been a W124 or W126, and they may actually have a completely different differential uh, because with everything else in this car, it seems that they just kind of fucking replace parts uh, willy-nilly without any um, actual uh, concern. So, mm, but I am going to go with these right here. And uh, yeah, just, just hope for the best until uh, someone tells me otherwise. Well, we're definitely getting a test of that window spline. Hoo wee, I got puddles in the yard. That's that's not normal. Well, sunroof doesn't leak, but it looks like based off of where the dampness is, it looks like the windshield leaks. So um might have to change this uh, windshield weather stripping. Okay, well after much hosing I have determined that, yeah, it's, that's definitely where it's leaking from. Um, and it's leaking onto the seat, running off the back of the seat, dribbling down into the back seat, or running down the front of the A-column, going right to there, there to that corner, and then dripping onto the passenger seat. However, I'm still not certain where it's getting in, unless it's the sunroof. And actually, yeah, I think it is. Nope, there we are, smoking gun. It's going in right there on that tiny little itty bitty sixteenth of an inch corner, sixteenth of an inch gap that I left there on the corner. Uh, additionally, I noted there is a hole 
right here in the weather stripping. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a tiny hole and it flows out right down out of this door and goes down to the door. So that's kind of nice, but I don't think I'm going to seal that because otherwise it goes right there into that. Also, it's not um, the windshield because if it was the windshield, it would be leaking down the inside of the windshield or just straight down out of the dash. Um, the interior of this seal, because this seal is on the windshield with this chrome piece in it, and then that is sealed down onto um, a pinch weld up here on the frame. So there's no way for water coming in here to get into the cap unless it's going through the seal straight down on the windshield. And it's not doing that because it's coming straight out right here. Yeah. So, I think that kind of proves that it's uh, it's got to be the sunroof seals. So, I guess I need to uh, forego this window spline and try and find some place that's actually selling um, proper seals. Um, it could be that these the seals I put in don't actually work worth a shit anyway. Um, and uh, they don't seal this at all either which could always end up being an option. Hopefully it's not, but uh, I can hope at least. Okay, so as a stopgap, until I can get some better seals, um, specifically a rear seal that'll fit, and I think I might've found a kit specifically for the coops, I've just went out and bought a little bit more of this smaller uh, spline, and that fits way better down here on this side. And I've just kind of overlapped it here and jammed it down in there. So hopefully this shouldn't leak. Maybe, theoretically. We'll see. Should rain again this weekend. Might have another couple storms on me before I get my seals in. So we'll see if this is a sufficient stopgap or not. For sure. Okie dokie. While I'm waiting for these seals to show up, I've determined I need to do something about this rear sun or this front sunroof drain, as well as inspect that one over there. In order to do that, I gotta get this leather job out of the uh, the front headliner doohickey out. So in order to do that, I'm going to need to pull this guy, which I know how to do, just jam a knife up in there, pop it out, and unplug it as well as these two jobbers, and there's usually supposed to be something there, but I'm missing that, so we won't worry about that. And the rear view mirror, and I've just pulled that off, and just, uh, here's a quick tip on how to get this guy off. Um, the mirror itself is just on a ball socket, and it pops out. Mine was very crunchy, and so the back of the plastic has uh, <laughs> broken a bit, but this guy is apparently made of uh, much better stuff, at least theoretically. So I eventually was able to wriggle that out, and then this guy is just held in with these two detents, which are being pushed out by this fuck huge spring. So really what you do um, is you just take that mirror off, and then you just grab one side of this like that, push it to one side, and just give it a rip. Um, I was trying to pull the thing out of the front, and eventually what I, I, was, I thought I was supposed to pull it down and slide it forward. So I was kind of doing that, and eventually it just came off. So yeah, all you really got to do is just grab it, pull it to one side, give it some torque, and it'll come out. Getting it back in is going to be a different matter, because uh, these are fuck huge springs. Like, that's, I can't move that at all. I just tried pressing it with a screwdriver, and I barely got it to move. Um, it looks like you can... Yeah, yeah, she gonna be, she gonna be fun to get back in. But anywho, now that I got that guy out, now I just have to take the three screws out of this guy, pop this guy out, and then should just be one, nope, two screws holding each of the mirrors on. And then theoretically there should be something right here, but mine has disintegrated. I just have some like springs or something left here. Um, and we should just be able to, uh, yeah, I slipped the headliner off around that, so we won't pay too much attention to those. And yeah, uh, and then I believe I have to take this trim piece off right here. So I'll have to pop the sunroof open. And I think it's one, two, at least four, if not five or six Phillips head screws holding that trim piece on. And I think that clamps this edge of the leather. And I should be able to pull out that leather and this um, fiberboard uh, backer behind it. And uh, then we should be able to pop... Uh, the A columns out more or less and uh, inspect the drains and hopefully all the rubber is still there and still good and it's just a rusted hole in the roof and I can just JB weld that back together and uh, ignore it for another five years or ever. Okie dokie just went around with a P2 Phillips head and all of these Phillips head screws came out without a problem. Haven't checked these yet but I'm hoping they won't be a problem. That guy might be a little bit 
a little bit of a problem, but we won't worry about it. These two were cru were crusty. All these other ones came out beautifully, like they were brand new. Um, if you remember, um, the passenger floorboard used to stay dry and the driver's floorboard used to get wet uh, back when this was parked out in front of the tractor shed. And I believe that was because of those drain holes up there for the sunroof. Um, so now we're on to the passenger side being wet. And I'm wondering if the sunroof drains aren't actually both rotten out. And so the fact that the car is slanted this way now instead of this way is causing more to come out of this side, maybe? Probably not, but um, just a thought. Anywho, anyway, on a day that is uh, not 8.15 in the morning when I need to be at work in yeah, 45 minutes, I'm going to pull this whole headliner job, or open up the sunroof, pull this whole headliner job out and get all that out. Maybe do that mm, tomorrow or this weekend, and uh, yeah, hopefully um, it's just like a couple of like small pinholes in there at the lowest point and I can just jam some JB weld up in there and maybe throw some Gorilla Tape on top of that just for good luck and uh, never have to think about this again. I've said it now and I've jinxed myself, but a man can dream. A man can dream. Well, I have all the little fiddly bits off the headliner and I'm wondering, with the key in the ignition, if I just press this, will it pop the splines or will it pop the breaker? Neither. I guess that's probably the best thing. So, anywho, I am going to pull these guys out right quick. And I'll just have to remember to get all of that back in before the rain comes. And, uh, yeah, then we can uh, see about... Oh, damn, she is deep down in there. Hell. Well, anyway, I'm going to pull that off on screen, and uh, then we can uh, see about uh, fixing these drains. Okay, so we have a bit of a development. I may or may not have ripped the headliner a little bit, so we'll ignore that. Duct tape will fix that. But uh, here's what I'm looking at is here are the, you know, the drains, the corners for the sunroof. They may or may not be really fucking crusty, but the thing is, there's no holes in them. Either of them. They're both really fucking nasty looking, but there's no holes. Fucking, oh, actually, here's a big ass hole right here. Here's the culprit. There's a hole in the tip of the pipe itself. Okay, so there's our failure point there. This is actually still intact somehow. Wonder if it's doing the same over there. I'll have to feel it up, but I know this this one looks like it's clogged, so we'll address that. Anyhow, okay, well mystery mystery unmystified. So I'll just jam some JB Weld or something in there and take care of that. Okie dokie. This guy actually still appears to be solid somehow, but here's what we're dealing with over here. As you can see, honestly, not all that horrible, but like the last three quarters of an inch of the pipe is about halfway gone, uh, especially on the bottom. So my solution is I'm just going to jam a whole fuck ton of black RTV all up around this um, uh, tube up here, uh, as well as into this pipe. And uh, then as soon as I shove that down on there, I'm just going to slather as much as I can all around the bottom, and then wrap it in some uh, like aluminum tape and uh, call it good. All right, so I've slathered that up all good like. So that hopefully shouldn't leak. And just to be safe, I did a little bit more of the same over there. And I'm just gonna let that cure overnight and uh, come out in the morning, reinstall my headliner and uh, hopefully it works. Should probably water test it first, but I'm not going to. Cause if this doesn't work, uh, I'm probably just gonna fucking call the sunroof shut. But anywho, I digress, I'm gonna roll up the sunroof and uh, pack shit in. All right, well, this is sufficiently dry after an hour, and uh, I've got nothing better to do on a Wednesday afternoon, so I'm just going to stick the uh, ripped headliner back up with some weather stripping adhesive. I'm letting that do its five to ten minute magic, and uh, we're just going to slap these bad boys bucket back up in here, stick the headliner back up, and uh, jam some spline back in there, and uh, hope and pray. Okay, well, that's all back together, except I broke the ball socket on the back of the rear view mirror. So uh, I'm going to make a half-assed attempt to epoxy that back together, but I give that like a 2% chance of working. Not more like a 1% chance of working. So I guess I'm going to have to run to the scrapyard or uh, buy a new mirror online or figure out some way I can just fucking bolt this shit in place. Ugh, always something. Yeah, that's, that's not going to be fun. Well, I don't think that's going to do jack shit, but we'll give it a day or seven and... Uh, 
it worth a shot, but I'm going to go uh, see if I can order up an aftermarket replacement because uh, I have a, yeah, it sh it's not going to work, but I'll try. Also, this stupid cunt stopped working and I don't know why. Fucking pizza shit. <sighs> the cunt blew a fuse somehow. Well, she just blew three fuses instantly. So, uh, I'm starting to believe my cousin. Uh, when I showed her that I was working on her car from college, she said, whatever you do, don't touch the rearview mirror. Because every time I touched the rearview mirror, something on the car would break. And here I am, I've broken the rearview mirror, and now the dome light doesn't work. Yeah, <laughs> I don't fucking know what to say. Um, anywho, uh, yeah, every time I stick a fuse in there, it instantly blows, even though that I have the switch off for the light. So, um, I don't know what that's about, but it's, uh, it's pulling a fuck huge amount of amps instantly, apparently. So, uh, I'm just gonna not anymore. Okay, so, um, dome light is still blowing fuses, and the pr trouble is that 8 amp fuse runs a ton of shit in the car. It runs the trunk light, it runs the flashers, it runs the radio, it runs a bunch of shit. So, the dome light is, like, my l thing I'm least concerned about. I don't know why it is, uh, it is suddenly just like instantly shorting out or what but anywho currently I have the door shut I have the dome light set to on and I just took a 16 amp fuse in there and I've disconnected the negative terminal of the battery I'm gonna stick this bad boy on here and see if that fuse blows immediately uh, if it does we got a major problem and I probably need to buy a new dome light because um, I don't have any more 8 amp fuses left well I have one left and uh, I'm not blowing it testing this but let's give it a shot Let's see if that fuse blew. Yeah, that flew, fuse blew instantly. So something is horribly wrong with the dome light. Um, don't know what, but I guess we're uh, we're gonna go back to my original plan of just hot wiring that to a fucking light switch. Huh, can't have nice things. Okay, well, it is way too fucking early, but I woke up from a dead sleep, took a piss, and then my brain just started thinking about ball sockets and rocker switches so here we are in the car I've just measured this guy this is exactly a 5 8 ball um, I'm thinking I can rebuild the ball socket but the problem is the plastic on the mirror is like literally at the point where I can just do push it real hard just give it a real sharp push and then my thumb will just go right through it so I don't think I'm gonna have anything to glue it to but I think theoretically I could just fucking build a socket and JB weld it to a piece of glass. Uh, but we'll get there when we get there. What I'm more interested about today is this guy. And I think we're at the point where I am just going to gut this entire thing and just go to the auto, auto parts store and just buy a three position. Um, oh, hey, it works now. Oh, wait. Okay. Never mind. I don't know what the fuck I did, but I guess it doesn't want to ground anymore. Huh. Huh. Well, well, boys and girls, the secret is uh, just don't connect the ground wire, and for some reason it'll work. Okay, never mind. Well, I'm going to stop thinking about that. I even had this guy out here. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I guess, I guess the reason it was working before is that I basically didn't have a good connection to the ground wire because I broke half of the spade connector and had a piece of aluminum foil shoved up in there. So I assumed that was the problem and then I fixed it and it seems to have broken it. Anywho, so we're just going to think about this now, which is the harder thing. And, uh, yeah, um, I'm thinking if I can get like a piece of PVC or something or a piece of pipe that has a precisely a 5 8 diameter and if it doesn't I can just bend the pipe a little bit or something just enough that I have a, a perfect resistance fit on here and then I can just scallop in the backside ever so slightly which if I had PVC would be perfect because I could just like chamfer the inside edge so it has a flare and then just like get like a hot knife and just like put little tiny scallops in it just so that it has some grip then we can have a, like a plug on the front 
which acts as an adjustment screw, which puts forward tension on this, and then that can have its own little plate mounted to the side of that, and then as long as I can find some way to affix that plate to the back of the mirror, then we'll have a brand new ball socket. But the problem is, I don't think I'm going to be able to affix that to the back of the mirror. Um, so yeah, that sounds overly complicated, and it is, but it's really the only thing I've been able to think of at the moment. Um, so yeah, we'll, uh, maybe I'll make one of those as a proof of concept and glue it to a, a fucking, <laughs> just glue it to a tiny piece of mirror and call it a day. I don't know. We'll see. All right. So here's kind of what I'm thinking. Uh, thankfully I found something that works perfectly. Uh, a piece of wherever it went. There it is. Oh, come on. Sunrise. Stop doing that. Half inch PVC apparently fits, has the perfect internal diameter to pit, fit a piece of five eighths or five eighths ball in it because... That's pretty beautiful. It just swells up a little bit. And if I really want, and what I'm thinking is cut about maybe a three quarter inch, one inch piece off of this. And then just imagine that this is PVC. What I'll probably do is buy a pipe cap, uh, like a four inch, three inch or four inch pipe cap, and then just dremel out a square from the back of it. And then we'll probably put a little recess down in that, sink the pipe down into it, PVC cement it, and in place and then we can take this little three quarter inch piece of pipe that I cut and then you know take the Dremel and cut like one or two like three eighths grooves in it maybe three or four and then we'll grab the take the front edge of this um, stick a uh, cone bit in it chamfer out the inside so that it'll pop on and then we'll uh, take blowtorch soften it up a little bit and then just like stick a um, hose clamp on the very tip squeeze it in so that the front edges do this so it'll have a front geom the front lip will have a geometry uh, like this and then we'll turn it in like that and there'll be a slot so it can expand like that then it'll all be glued down onto this and the whole thing will only be about that deep and then that can just be JB welded like right in here to the back of this little plate right here the only problem is if I want my hey asshole quit using your high beams function to work I'm gonna have to blow out the rest of the back of this to, in order to fit that onto this plate and I have a funny feeling that this isn't going to work because my epoxy is bad and it's still gooey after however many hours? about 11 hours? Uh, well 10 hours and this is supposed to be 5 minute epoxy I think uh, plus it's all Zipped out in there, so I'm gonna have to get after it with a Dremel or something anyway. But anywho, that's my backup plan. Um, that's that's my that's plan uh, C. Plan A is that working. Plan B is I'm gonna go back to the scrapyard and uh, pick up a mirror if the the 300 SD that's there has a mirror. Pick up a dome light and pick up an AC compressor. Um, so, yeah, that's my thought. Um, I'm really hoping I can get this to work because it's still got my uncle's Ipte sticker on it. <laughs> and, I mean, at the very least, I can just blow all this plastic shit off of here and just do what I said and just glue it right to the back of the glass, and that'll work. Um, and, you know what? I'll probably do that. This will be plan B. And if I can't get that done, I'll just go buy a new mirror. Uh, anywho, we'll see. All right, I don't think uh, this almost worn out like 10 year old thing of five minute epoxy is ever going to set because it still ain't set so we're just going to preemptively just glob a fuck ton of jb weld the whole way around this entire thing as best as i can and just hope for the best okie dokie well that has been thoroughly slathered so if that doesn't work all hope is lost and uh, we're going to have to uh make our modified ball socket so anywho i'm going to give that uh 24 hours or so and uh hope and pray Okay, so, small crisis averted. This guy is working again, and uh, we have the rear view mirror on. I really should have let it go 24 hours, but I got impatient. I let it go about 7 hours, and then I put it on there, and it cracked just enough to let the thing on. I also went after it with a 5 8 drill bit and just opened up the thing a little bit more, just so there wasn't as much pressure. Make sure I could clean all the epoxy out of the entrance. I didn't go all the way in there because I didn't want it to fall off, and it cracked just enough to let it in, and then popped on and we're still nice and balanced and I got it set so I'm not going to touch it but we're going to call 
that good and solved until it falls off again. And as much as I wanted to experiment with uh, making that half-assed, uh, jury-rigged um, PVC ball socket work, I also don't want to fuck around with that. So we'll just accept this small victory. Alrighty, new sunroof seals are in and uh, they don't f fucking fit. It's the shit for the goddamn sedan. Uh, this this is unobtainium, I guess. This listing said specifically fits the W123 coupe. I get this shit in. It is a Mercedes 115. It's a W115 fucking seal. As you can see, these metal side jobbers are uh, clearly four inches longer than they're fucking supposed to be. And uh, yeah, um, this is the same rear seal as what I had last time. Pretty certain that that's not going to fit. But I don't know. We'll pull, we'll pull this shit apart one more time and double check, but I'm pretty certain that uh, this is uh, the wrong fucking part. Alrighty, well, sunroof's out. That only took me like 15, 20 minutes. And I don't think this was the right seal, but boy, howdy, I am making it the right seal because I'm fucking done at this point. Um, as you can see, way too fucking long. Cut at the wrong angle. So, uh, um, and yeah, it does kind of that. It's also uh, not correctly sized. It's a little too fucking fat. I had to go in here and flare that channel out like another sixteenth of an inch with the just tip of my knife, stuck it in backwards and just kind of did that the whole way, cleaned it out. And I've just gone through and pressed it all in. It is nice and pretty damn flush now, but I'm going to take some weather stripping adhesive and just glue in this whole front edge here all the way up to there. And then I'm going to cut it flush with the side of the sunroof and do that on both sides. And uh, hopefully that stays in place. We have new seals in. Sunroof makes a very loud clunking noise now because of all the fitment. And uh, I'm confident that uh, this shit is not going to seal. Uh, rainwater, like, fucking at all. Um, but uh, we'll see if the sunroof drains work. And if they don't, uh, we're caulking this shut. Or uh, I guess I'll just disassemble everything and take these seals back out, throw them in the trunk, and uh, just stick the spline in because uh, yeah, I'm, I'm done hunting around. Um, I don't really understand if this is supposed to be like further back in this way or something. That's as far as it goes. Might be oversized, don't really know. Um, but everything is just barely fitting now. But uh, all of our seals are very loose. I don't, yeah, that's not, that's not fucking sealing at all. So um, yeah, we're gonna let this sit through the rainstorm this weekend. And uh, if we have water in the cab, um, those seals are coming right out and we're putting that spline back in and uh, we're probably just gonna fucking caulk this thing shut um, Yeah, it is what it is, but uh, I'm done throwing money and time at this sunroof I got more important things to pay attention to Alrighty, Well, the rain is pretty much here Thunder are coming so uh Let's see how much water we get in the cab. I have a feeling it's gonna be all of it because I have absolutely no idea about the condition of these rear drains But I assume they work because these are rusted out so all right, well, it really didn't rain all that much. It was about half an inch of rain in about, maybe over the course of an hour and a half. And uh, absolutely bone dry down in here. Same goes for over there. And driver's seat. I don't feel any moisture up here, back here, down there, nothing here, nothing on the seats. Sorry about the camera. So I think our sunroof drains actually work on the rear and they now work on the front. And uh, I believe that is the piss hole for the uh, rear sunroof drain. And the front sunroof drains, I believe are right here. Yep, and I see water coming down that, so that's a good sign. And not a lot coming out over here, but definitely coming out to a degree and uh, let's see if the this piss hole has any water in it no but we are sloped in the other direction so well I think that might actually mostly work somehow okay well this dude guy was uh not working correctly and every time I drove down my road it would just go and very sadly point at the ground I also have been putting the dog in here and she's been slapping it with her tail and that hasn't helped it. So I just jammed a bunch of that T8000 Wonder Glue I love so much down in there. 
And I also coated the ball itself in a thin layer of the stuff and wriggled it around. And then additionally, I have two sets of cracks that have developed at the uh, fracture points on here. So it was basically not working. Now it is way more stiff and I'm going to try and get it back up in here without breaking it again. And uh, yeah, this apparently this is not supposed to come apart and I just uh, did it wrong to begin with because I figured, oh, it's ball socket, it'll come apart, not knowing that this was horribly UV rotten. And uh, yeah, so uh, wish me luck. All right, well, it's a little bit looser than I would prefer, um, but it's a hundred times better than what it was. So yeah, that's, that's good enough. It doesn't take much to adjust it, which is not my preference. I like the kind that's like because I get really particular about the positioning of my mirror. So uh, yeah, but uh, good enough. Well, uh, came home from work and uh, found that uh, doors are locked. So uh, what in the Sam fuck? Okay, well uh, the whole fucking mirror housing just exploded apparently. So uh, yeah. Huh. Well, I guess we are going to the uh, piece of PVC glued to the back of the mirror strategy. All right, now we are initiating plan B. What I have done is cut out a piece of this fiber board, which has the uh, checkered padding on the back, and uh, about a three quarter inch piece of this, what is this, half inch schedule 40 PVC pipe, and some of this PLX, uh, PL3X, um, construction adhesive and I have glued that fiber board smooth side down to the back of the mirror glass because this is just glass with a coating so I don't want to be gluing shit and torquing on it. I need some kind of damper in there and then I put the checkered side out and then I have slathered an absolutely ridiculously healthy amount of PL3X all around this chunk of PVC pipe after I've already jammed this ball joint in there because I have a feeling if I try and press that down and seed it after I glue all this, I'll shatter this glass instantly. So we'll see if this works. Uh, if this doesn't work, what I'm going to do is scrape all the PL3X off, probably cut another piece of pipe or I might be able to scrape it off the PVC. Then uh, we are going to somehow create a socket on a flat piece that we can then um, solidly affix that PVC to. If I can get like a little flat piece of PVC that has that I can cut a, a groove in and then PVC cement that in and then have a really wide like flat piece of PVC that I can then glue on there. That'll probably be the ticket. But this is what I was able to do in the like 30 minutes since I got home just so I can let this set up overnight and try tomorrow and get really pissed when it doesn't work and I probably break the mirror. And then I'll go to the scrapyard on Saturday, which is the day after tomorrow. But eh, we'll fucking see. But hopefully that works. And it is uh, perfectly kludgy and fits with the rest of the car. All right. It has been 12 hours, more or less, and uh, a little bit more. And uh, she's still just a little soft. So I'm going to try and let this thing go for like 48 hours. Because I really don't want to have to do this again. And I have a feeling as soon as I torque on that, it's just going to rip uh, this PLX right off of here. So I'm going to let this fully cure before I do anything. And I think in the meantime, I'm going to add some kind of like soft like border to this because this is just raw glass like and uh you know as, as a man of like partial italian descent it's impossible for me to not you know talk with my hands so uh i have a bad habit of being in the car driving with my left hand and uh if for some strange reason i actually have another person in the car in the mercedes which would be weird because who wants to get in that death trap i'm gonna do this and smack my finger directly into the corner of this mirror because i do it in my in the jeep all the time so uh you know um i want to not slice my finger open while i'm driving that death trap and uh, additionally i have been taking that thing for rides and she absolutely loves it but that tail that tail just never stops and uh, I, I don't think she has any nerve endings in it. It's been like that for all six years we've had her. She just smashes it into like table legs, walls, floors, doors, literal 90 degree angles in the drywall, full speed, and it doesn't even phase her. So uh, if I have her in that car, uh, she likes to get in the seat, turn around, and then slam her tail into the windshield and the mirror. Uh, she's just going to slice that thing open, and uh, we're going to turn the, uh, the interior of that car into a... Uh, murder scene slash Jackson Pollock painting. And uh, I would rather not do that uh, because 
one, I'm gonna have a dog spraying blood everywhere while I'm driving the car 60 miles somewhere. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just not a good combination. So uh, we're gonna put some kind of soft rubber border on this thing. And uh, I'm realizing uh, I kind of left these a little bit long. I may have to do something about that. Maybe a Dremel, not really certain. It's fiberboard, so it's kind of a pain to cut. It takes a lot of pressure and a lot of time, but we'll figure it out uh, or I'll just ignore it. Uh, my initial thought is 3 16 fuel line, but fuel line's expensive. I need like, uh, like two and a half foot to do this. It's a foot long. It's about three inches, so about, about 30, 32 inches will be all I need. I'm going to leave a little bit of a gap down here so I have a center mark so that I can line it up because I'm OCD. Uh, I also have this um, hard um, like PVC vinyl tube, which I think came out of like some kind of boost or oil pressure gauge or something. I don't know. It was in the Corvette parts. My dad said it didn't come off Corvette, so it went into my bin. Um, but it's also like this kind of nasty off-white clear color, which won't really look all that nice and uh, if I can get black on it it'll match the interior and you know church it up a little bit but I don't want to waste my fuel line because fuel line ain't cheap so I'm gonna run to the hardware store and see if they got some weather stripping that's like perfect I'd rather not use foam because it's just going to disintegrate in the UV but uh, if I can find some like vinyl um, weather stripping or just some regular like black vinyl 3 16th or 1 inch 1 inch tubing I should just be able to just put it in a jig just cut a straight line down the middle well straight line down the middle of it then take some of that T8000 Wonder Glue and just run a bead the whole way around, stick it on there, and be good to go. So I'm going to figure that out this afternoon, and then hopefully in 24 hours I'll be able to stick this back in the car and won't accidentally break everything immediately. Okie dokie, well that bad boy is installed. Looking fucking mint. Oh yeah, look at that shit. Anyway, uh, I didn't put a bumper on it because this thing is actually really nicely beveled the entire way around. Like, it has like a miter on both sides. Like, I mean... I could talk shit about Mercedes overcomplicating things, but fucking nice touch right there. Look at this fucking nice touch. Goddamn fucking mint. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. Ah, oh, fucking pussy machine. Anyway, that's done. And, uh, yeah, I don't have to spend any money on that or uh, waste any more time. So, fucking choice. One more tiny fucking problem that suddenly resurfaced, fucking killed, and murdered, and buried in the backyard. I did not realize uh, that was going to be so very, very visible when you walk up to the car. Uh, otherwise, I would have spray-painted it black, but uh, too late now, because that son of a bitch is real damn hard to put in there. If that shit right there doesn't scream, I eat possums recreationally, I don't know what does. Mint. <laughs> Just look at that happy pump. Just enjoying herself, slapping everything, slapping me. Oh. Maybe, just maybe, we'll have a license plate in a week or two and we can take the hound someplace other than just to the end of the road and back. All right, here's a shocking new development with Ol' Mossy, which it's probably not going to do now that I'm filming it. Well, it's doing it now, but uh, neutral safety switch was uh, not working the other day. Interestingly, the parking pole was like not engaging. It took, the car had to like roll forward and back like two, three foot before it would engage, which is about twice as far as normal. And uh, the neutral safety switch was uh, not working. And uh, I don't know if you've ever noticed, but uh, let me put my foot on the brake. But uh, I have this much play in the shifter. in like each of the gears, which is not normal. And uh, there's two bushings down in here that connect this shifter down to the actual linkage that goes down to the transmission. And uh, I'm pretty sure those are uh, just gone. So I've ordered up two more of those. And additionally, I've ordered up a neutral safety switch, which I don't think is actually broken. I think it's just the bushings in here are just so worn out that this guy actually can't put enough force on the linkage to get the the, the actual like um, rod on the outside of the transmission to rotate just far enough to get it into park and that's why it was taking it so much room but anywho I've ordered up one of those because I've learned my lesson now the last three times I've had something come up like that and I go that's ah, not a problem I'll get to it some other time it has become unobtainium and unable to she is just a diesel and 
become unable to source. So uh, 50 bucks, a little steep, but uh, I'll just throw it in the trunk. And uh, if it ends up actually being a problem, great, I have a spare. If not, I'll sell it in a year and it'll be worth 150 bucks. So yeah, uh, are you gonna like stop? Lord. See, this is the problem with, with a, I think there's a leak in my vacuum booster. Oh, there she goes, she's a trying. Slowing on down. There we go. Anyway, pretty sure there's a leak in the vacuum booster seal, which is uh, why it takes forever for the vacuum booster to make vacuum and why it doesn't actually see it, save vacuum for any extended period of time. But anyway, I digress. Anyway, neutral safety switch is being funny. Pretty sure it's the bushings in there. Also, I, I'm pretty much sitting halfway between neutral and drive when I'm in drive. So uh, those were five bucks. Neutral safety switch was 50. Cheap insurance. We'll throw it in the trunk. And uh, we'll work on that guy, replace the bushings, and hopefully that'll go away. But, yeah, it was fun. It was, like, the one of the, like, three times I've ever showed this off to anybody. And they came over, and I was like, ah, oh, she's, she's fucking totally reliable. Just turn the key, she fires right up. It's awesome, we'll go for a ride. Went in there, dead. Just nothing. Couldn't figure out what the issue was. As soon as they left, I went and Googled it, and I was like, oh, neutral safety switch. Put it in neutral, car fired up. Yeah. Anyway, pretty sure it's the bushings. But we'll get to those here eventually. All right, parts just arrived for the neutral safety switch as well as the shifter bushing, but more importantly, we got a plate, we got registration, we have insurance, and I'm pretty sure my driver's license is still valid. So, you know what time it is. It's wait for it to not be raining so I can put the plate on, and then first drive as a legal road vehicle. However, before we go anywhere with the car, um, the man who actually gave me this car passed away last night of a sudden heart attack um he's my uncle's best friend his son is is my cousin's you know childhood best friend uh, he's a dear friend of the family and i mean there's there's something poetic about the car finally being street legal the day after he passes but i was really looking forward to you know driving the thing over to his house showing him that I had it back on the road, shaking his hand and thanking him, but that's just, it's not going to happen anymore. Um, and I just wanted to, to preface that with it, preface this with it. Um, I mean, I'm still trying to process it. He was a, you know, he was, he was an important man to my family. He was an important man to the community. And it's just, it's just the way she goes sometimes. So yeah. Um, I don't got much else to say, but we're, we're putting old Mousy back on the road and we're driving her somewhere, but you know, I'm, I'm doing it in memory of Woody and yeah. So I guess without further ado, let's, let's go somewhere. Let's do something. Let's turn a new page. Let's, let's put this hugga to bed. All right. Well, there she is. Oh, look at that. Old Mousy. Yep. I'm gonna love having to explain that to every person who asks me for the rest of my life. But anywho, also I'm hoping that those vanity plates don't cost $70 a year, because that would suck. And we have the original 2004 stamp plate on the front. Don't know if that's illegal, but we don't have front plates here, so I assume it's not. And if it is, I'll get a ticket, and then it'll go away. But anywho, yep, we have plates. We are, in fact, street legal as of today i can take this bad boy anywhere that she wants to break down on the side of the road at and hopefully i don't end up in the marsh all right well i can't think of a better place to end this video than here so uh if you like what i'm doing here go down there like the video comment i don't read that shit but do it anyway it drives engagement gets me all that fat youtube money that i don't make because i don't have enough subscribers and uh if you want to see the rest of this uh, adventure and the you know inevitable debacle that's going to be trying to drive this place anywhere here in Charleston County considering I don't think I can I, I don't think I can go but about four miles in any direction before I have to cross some si sort of tidal creek or causeway or something where if I break down I'm a road hazard and will probably die but uh yeah um so uh if you, if you want to see all that crap then uh smash the subscribe button and until next time time out <laughs>